Okay. Uh, last bone for the skull that we need to do is the mandible. Um, it says on this slide, the mandible is a part of our facial skeleton. So the mandible is a kind of like a horseshoe shaped bone. It comes around here. It's our lower jaw. It does hold all of our lower teeth. So I'm going to put in here with the lower jaw. Uh, we'll put mandible. We'll put in here holds all lower teeth. So all lower teeth are called mandibular teeth. Continuing with the teeth, the just like the maxillary bone, the ridges outside of the tooth socket are going to be called the alveolar processes. And then the socket for the tooth itself is also called the alveolar socket. So again, we're going to have alveolar processes and alveolar socket. Now, outside of the teeth, the mandible, we can break this down into a couple different sections. This chin section that's right up front here, this would be the mental section, where then the rest of this would be the mandibular region. So right in through here, I know this diagram tags the body straight ahead, but really the body, I want you to think of the body as more of this region right here. This is the body. Okay. <coughs> then the front part of the mandible, put right up in through here, this region, I'll cross that out. This is our mental region that's right up front. There's a couple things on the mental region. We have a couple structures. This one's already tagged called the mental foramen. That's on your responsibility list. This is for the uh, mental nerve that comes out and gives sensation to that anterior kind of lateral mandible. Then we have this region right here, which is called the mental protuberance. Okay, mental protuberance. And so that's the chin or mental region. Then if we go back further past the body of the mandible, we reach this section right in through here, which is the angle of the mandible. And then we get to this larger region right in through here, which is the ramus. That's that wide part that's more vertical that sits in front of the ear. Then the ramus branches off into two um, structures or processes, if you will. This mandibular process comes up and gives rise to the mandibular condyle. The mandibular condyle is what actually articulates with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone to create the temporal mandibular joint. So we'll put that in here. So I'm gonna circle this here. We'll talk about So remember, a lot of times when we talk about joints or articulations, condyles are going to articulate with fossas. So the mandibular condyle will say articulates with mandibular fossa of temporal bone. to form the TMJ, or the temporal mandibular joint. Okay. The other process that's at the top of the ramus is our coronoid process, which is right here. It's also tagged there. That coronoid process will come back in the muscular system. And that's the point of attachment or insertion of the temporalis muscle to help elevate the mandible and close it for chewing and talking and things of that nature. Okay. Two structures to finish up on the mandible. If we go on the inside, we have on the interior 
uh, on the inside of the ramus, we have this foramen on both sides called the mandibular foramen. Mandibular nerve comes out of that foramen. Then around the arch here, around the back side on the inside of the mandible, we have what's called the alveolar arch, where it's that arch on the inside where we see all of the teeth on that part of the mandible there. And that's listed for you right here. Okay. So that's our mandible. Then the last thing we need to talk about is the uh, pediatric or infant skull. And we'll talk about fontanelles. We'll do that in another video.